Please stand and worship with us.
reached one person that's enough that's enough for for everything because one person is a life one person is a soul and that matters we all matter God you adopted us you redeemed us and we're chosen nobody else has to choose us because you chose us God and you put people in our life for a reason and I just pray for the end of the semester just that we don't give up we can still make an impact and it's not about us it's about them people out there I just pray that we all be more selfless and just serve each other because that creates an environment where you're here you're in the middle and you're you're in this environment God thank you so much I pray for Miss Gloria that you just speak through her and everybody else who's speaking and thank you for all the main blessings God 
Bless us today and bless others. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, everyone. I'm Mrs. Lee, and joining me on stage this morning is our very special guest, Miss Gloria Kennard, and we also have Reed McReynolds, a junior, and Ryan Burton, a junior. And what we're going to be talking about this morning is humble service and Miss Terry Moore. Humble service has been our core value theme, our school-wide theme for this year. And um, they have some interesting stories to tell you that I can't wait for you to hear. Um, I want to introduce Miss Gloria Kennard. She is a leader in our community. She, uh, I believe, knows Miss Moore through their work at the Bridge Ministry. You may have heard of that. And she also runs a, a free Thanksgiving and I believe New Year's Day meal for the community. So she has won numerous awards and is a leader in our community and is a great example of service. And uh, I got to meet her in August when she came and spoke to the teachers right before school started. And then the juniors got to um, help her move earlier this year. And I believe that's where y'all come in. So uh, Ms. Gloria, I'm going to start with you. Just share a little bit more about your ministry and what it is that you do. And there's mics behind you you can grab. Good morning. Good morning to you. Lord, and I thank you all for inviting me. I stand here this morning in the name of Jesus and to tell you what I do, not for glory, but for the Lord. Sometimes we want to give ourselves credit for what we do. No, we are doing it for the Lord, and when we do it for the Lord, he will do what? Bless us. So we are all a blessed morning to be able to be here. First of all, the good Lord woke us all up this morning. First of all, the good Lord woke us all up this morning to be able to come and sit out in the audience. It wasn't an alarm clock. It wasn't your cell phone. It wasn't mom and dad that history, but it was the good Lord. And we're glad that he woke us up this morning to see a brand new day. Aren't you glad? Respond back. Aren't you glad to be here Amen. this morning? What else you want me to do? Tell us about what you do uh, with your Thanksgiving meal. Okay. In November 1988, I was sitting home doing nothing. And it was revealed to me, Gloria, you need to do something. So I decided I was going to do a Thanksgiving meal. I called my late pastor up, and I was telling him that I was going to do a Thanksgiving meal. He said, praise the Lord. I didn't have no money. Didn't have nothing. But I got out there on faith. Have you ever been in a place and you didn't have any money, anything, and somebody come along and give you something to help you? It was only God because God works through people. So I decided to get that meal together, and I'm, I'm telling you, judges, lawyers, everybody come through and gave something to have the meal. The meal started off very slow, very, very slow. But now, it is too much. The last couple of years, we had to drive by, and I was just so tired. We were running out of food. We were trying to cook food. We were trying to go get food. We feed six to 700 people every Thanksgiving at the Pleasant Grove Baptist Church on West Martin Luther King and Sims. After the Thanksgiving meal is over with, we do a New Year Day meal. And most of all, it'd be baked chicken, black-eyed peas, cornbread, onions, all the works. And God has really blessed it. And I am so thankful that I can get out and do something for somebody. As God say, what you do for Christ will last. You know, what you do for Christ will last. Because at the end, we want him to say, well done, our good and faithful servant. You've been, you've been faithful over a few things, 
Say, come on up with me. And we thank God for you this morning. And may God bless you and may God keep you. And, go ahead. and the, these two here are my adopted son. I had to move in August of 2021. And some of you all might be in the audience that came to help me. These two came, they moved all the stuff out. Oh, I was having a hard time. My husband died in 2015. They moved all the stuff out of the garage, all the stuff. Oh, they did so good. They put it out on the back porch. And my yard needed mowing. He said, I'll come mow your yard. I said, you will? And he had another yard to go mow. So I said, what is he coming to mow this yard? I went by the house. The yard wasn't mowed. I went back by the house. I caught him there and he there. Oh, they were mowing the yard. Oh, they did. They, Miss Gloria, how you like that? I said, that's good. Oh, they mowed, they mowed, they mowed, and they, they came on over to the house. And they had gone to another place to mow a yard before they came to my house. When they came to my house, they had some money. And I did not want to take it. They said, oh, Miss Gloria, you're going to take it. I said, well, I need a TV. And we went and got a TV. They both went to Walmart with me to get a TV. I told them I'm a backseat driver, so I met them over on the side, wherever it was. I called, I say, where y'all at? They say, we are here, Miss Gloria. So I walked down to where they were. We went inside and got a TV. Plus, he had some more money. So I said, well, I'm going to let them put all this money together, and I'm going to let them do what they want to do. Because you have to be trustworthy. Oh, they got me a TV. They took it home, and they brought it to my house in their car. And when they got, when I got there, they were already parked there because I'm a backseat driver. They went around the bypass, but I had to come through little cracks and corners. They got the TV out of the car, put it in the house. They hooked it up. He even took the trash with him. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. They are just so nice. They are just so nice. They are just so nice. And I thank God. Out of everybody that you meet is somebody that's going to, you know, you go become a part of. Because there is somebody for what? Everybody. So these two. And I said, y'all come, go to, come go to church with me. I said, y'all can wear y'all shouts if you want to. So I told them how to get to the church. And oh, some, some Sundays they come in and they be singing, they be clapping their hands. And they said, Gloria, you know them? I said, yeah, I know them. I said, these, these are my two sons. They come back to church. They've been coming back to church. They've been coming back to church. They went home, and we had lunch one day, and I got two cables, and I needed another TV in my other room. So I told him, I say, I came by to pay for another cable. He came over, and he hooked my cable up, you know, how you can see without a, the cable or antenna. He came, and he hooked it up. Now I have messed it up. And he's going to have to come back and fix it. <laughs> oh, they are, they are real, real nice. They are very, very, they are so busy now. They haven't been able to come back to church recently, but they are coming. And I really thank God for all of you all. And I thank God for these two here. I thank God for Sister Terry and how we all love one another because God is love. Thank you, Gloria. I'd like to hear from Reed and Ryan. Um, Reed and Ryan, if y'all will briefly share oh, thank you. your relationship with Gloria, how this started, and, and specifically about humble service. So, yeah, um, 
when we had the service day, we went over to Miss Gloria's house and we helped her move. Mm -hmm. And we prayed at the end and she had been asking for financial help because she was moving into a new house and she needed some help. And she also needed her yard mowed. And <laughs> as y'all know, Reed and I have our mowing business and we just decided that we wanted to help her because we know she's blessed so many people with her Thanksgiving meals and her New Year's meals and just helping the community just grow closer to God. So we wanted to, we wanted to bless her back and encourage her to keep doing that and help her any way we could. Yeah, just Ryan kind of summed it up, but basically we've just seen how much glory is poured into other people's lives and we wanted to do something to help her out because she's changed so many people's lives and it has made an impact in this community so much. Can you guys share how this experience has impacted you personally and your relationship with the Lord? Yeah, so it's really made a huge impact on me. I didn't even know it really made such an impact until about three months later, I was having a conversation with my dad in my kitchen and he said something to me that will stay with me forever. He said, Reed, everything in life is vertical to horizontal. And what he means by that is, you know, God's up here. And he's going to send down all these blessings and opportunities and successes. But you got to spread that horizontally. And for the longest time in my life, I was only looking horizontally. I was looking for me, like, how can this make me look better? But serving Gloria, I finally realized this life is not about me. It's about what I can do to further God's kingdom and serve the Lord. And furthermore, me and my dad are talking, he said, you know, you've got to be a tool of God, but you've got to be close to God. And I had realized, you know, I had been close to God my, uh, my entire life. So on Thursday, I accepted Jesus, and then that all started from one small act of service. So God has changed my life through this experience. I would say I've seen the way God uses people as examples to me. So... God used Miss Gloria to inspire Reed and I to bless her because she's blessed so many people. And it just shows me the way that God uses different people in our lives. Because we didn't know we were going to have Miss Gloria for service day. We were just the juniors that were going there to help her. And sure enough, that inspired both of us. And hopefully it will inspire you all too. I want to ask all of you, what would you say to anyone in the room who wants to serve, who wants to get involved, but maybe they're seeing all the barriers. They don't have ability or money or they're too young or they're too old. And when I think about y'all's story, I think about how you didn't see barriers and you saw a need and you saw people and you just were obedient to the Lord. So what would you say to people who have the willingness and don't know how to start? I would just say don't be afraid because no matter how young you are or whatever, whatever age you are, you can always help someone and there's always opportunities. We just have to, you just have to find them and take them because God presents so many opportunities for everyone in the, being able to serve and stuff and you just have to trust him and not be afraid and serve. Yeah, so kind of like what Ryan said, I believe like if you have a heart of service and you ask God, God, give me a way to serve, he will give you so many ways to serve, and you just got to trust God. So like when we were going to help Gloria, you know, we pulled onto the street, and we ran over a knife, and uh, it blew the tire of our trailer out. I mean, so yes, there are going to be barriers in your way, but we pushed through that and saw the other side, and God has blessed us so much with that experience. So what I have to say to y'all is, you know, no matter how young or old you are, whether you're the seventh grader over there or the senior about to graduate, God has service in your life, and you can make an impact today. Don't wait till later because you're not promised later. So when God presents you an opportunity, take it and run with it and he will uh, bless your life. And Gloria, can you share with us your heart? Why do you do what you do when you serve the community? Oh, okay. oh why I do what I do? Because God is good to me. And he wants me to go out and help one another. That's why he has all of us here together for one another. I need you and you need me and we all need the Lord. We can't do nothing without the Lord. And I'm 77 years old and I really need the Lord. I really need these two up here. I tell you, it's good to go out and help someone. Sometimes if you're in a snack bar and somebody needs five or ten cents and you got it, give it to them. Because you can come along and somebody might hand you, what, $500. That's God is blessing you because he always got somebody 
somebody on your side. And Sister Terry, she and her husband, he prays for me. They help me and they do whatever because God is good. You can't keep saying God is good. He's good to all of us. God is good all the time and we thank you. Thank you. Miss um, Moore, could you share about the work of the bridge ministry, what you do and what you and Gloria do with the bridge? Yeah, so um, we, but I've met Gloria about four years ago, probably. Um, she liked my husband a little bit better than she liked me at first. <laughs> But the Bridge Ministries is a food pantry, and I had, I've always had a heart for service, and it was really hard. I know it's a lot of time. Y'all need service hours, and y'all are always searching for things that y'all can do, and I couldn't find anything that I could do um, because I was working all day, and y'all are in school all day. And the Bridge Ministries was the only ministry I could find that did it at night. So it's a food pantry every Thursday night, um, every Thursday night in the evening from 5 to 7. It's a drive through right now because of COVID. They... Uh, Clients from Bryan and College Station and Anderson and Navasota, they come and they drive through and we load them up with a ton of food. Um, so if you are looking for service hours this summer or any time during the year, you can volunteer. Reed came last um, Thursday. He'll be here again this Thursday, I think. And, and you can be with Gloria every Thursday. Um, so that's always fun. But you, they come and we, have, we serve about 75 to 100 clients each Thursday, and they can only come once a month. So we're serving three to 400 people each month. And those are the people that live right in our backyards that are just right around here that we just sometimes choose to not see. And so it's a great opportunity. Reed did traffic control last time, and it gave him two hours to sit and just talk to people and just get to know people. And, and you can pray for them. You can, you just get to know them and you can see their situations and God can open up your eyes to things that are going around right around us when we choose sometimes to just keep our eyes closed. And so it's a great ministry and we would love to have y'all, but there's also other, so many other ministries that you can do um, in this community, which we think, we don't think has that many um, clients that would be, need to be served. We are just about out of time, so I want to ask one more question. Um, what have you learned about God, who he is, his character? What have you learned about God through serving? I want to hear from each of you. Okay, yeah, I'll start us off. So, I mean, I see a lot about God through Gloria. Gloria is just she's so servant-hearted, and everything that she does, she does it to her best ability, and it's always for God. It's never for Gloria. And she's instilled so many of those principles in my life, and it's really, it's changed the way I view um, just my life in general. And then I also see God, um, just kind of like I mentioned before, he will give you opportunities. God is there. He's right there willing to meet you. You just got to be able to meet him. And so that's really what I've learned from this experience. What I learned about God is God is good. God is God all by himself. And we need to imitate God. What that means is be like him. So that's, that's it. Just be like God. I would say I learned that God is not coincidental. Um, he put us in that position, and he opened that door for us to take it. And all we had to do was trust him, and it's his will that kept going. And so kind of like what Reed said, opportunities are presented from God, and he's always working to keep us in his, like, working for his plan in our lives and he always wants us to help, so, yeah. Ms. Moore? I would just say, like, through serving, God just opens my eyes to see things, see others through his eyes, and to love, and to just constantly look for opportunities for people, to help people, and to see where they're coming from, and to understand, and not to judge, and just try to find ways in my heart that I can serve others and not necessarily with money, but there's so many ways that you can serve others or just to, just to be there for them or to pray for them. So just opening my eyes more. Thank you. So again, we're bringing the year to a close and our theme of humble service. I hope that you are inspired and encouraged. Also our theme for Ellis and RS this year, our word has been intentional. So I pray and hope that you will take that today and look for intentional ways to serve others. And everyone up here is special, but also everyone up here is just very ordinary. And that is an encouragement to all of us that we don't need to do all these things first 
before we serve the Lord. We just need to do it. So if you'll pray with me. Dear Lord, I thank you so much for the testimony, uh, the work that you're doing through these people. And I ask that you would uh, spark something in our hearts, that you would open our eyes, as was said this morning, to see people as you see them. So many times our focus is on ourself. Our eyes are on ourself and our own needs. And I pray that you would expand our perspective to see people around, around us, to see the needs in our communities, to see the, the needs of the person next to us. And I pray that we would step out in obedience, in boldness, not because we have anything to offer other than ourselves, but because you are good and you are able and we offer ourselves to you. Lord, we ask you to use us and help us to see how you're already at work in our community. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.